Thank you. I was in fourth grade. I could win the competition. Uh, I got up went to the bathroom. That's a scary place. Most women won't use the plane on a toilet because the sound of the toilet when it flushes scares the hell out of it. <laughs> It just sounds like it's going to grab you by the butt, suck you down the tube, there's going to be nothing left but your shoes floating in the water, and they're going to be blue at that point. I know what you do though, you go in there, and you, you're afraid to sit down, so you start to squat, you get to where I think it's 45 degrees, I'm not sure what this angle is. You lock your knees, and you hover. And what this has done is given birth to a whole new breed of women, women with these incredibly strong thighs that I affectionately call skull crackers. I'm not complaining, my ears used to stick out a lot more than they do now. But the thing is, it just you just don't want to use it. And guys are afraid to use the bathroom too, because we're in there, and I'm sure this happened to most guys, you're in there in this little moving room trying to navigate. We're learning about torque and trajectory. Just we start to let it go, the plane hits some turbulence, the woman in front of our head goes, suddenly we're Apollo the dancing fountain, and our shoes are wet. You ever get the package of nuts and the adult proof foil package, you know what I'm talking about, stainless steel, little arrow in the corner says tear hair, you tear there, the arrow comes off in your hand. Yeah, I'm ripping and tearing after 35 minutes, I bite into the package, I'm getting shocks from the foil on the fillings of my teeth. I rip it open, there's two nuts inside. I was pissed, I said to the guy next to me, hey, I got two nuts. He moved over a seat. Towards me. So I don't like flying. But I like being here. This is very nice. It's a beautiful room here, the Camden House and uh, the LA Comedy Awards. You got some great comedians for you tonight and me. Thank you. I didn't know if that was going to get a laugh. You're going to notice throughout the course of the evening that uh, I really don't have much material. I've been doing this so long that I just stopped writing jokes. I just talk about the real things in my life. My favorite thing to talk about right now is my daughter. I'm 58 years old and uh, I have a four-year-old daughter. Figure that the hell out. How does that happen, huh? My wife was on birth control when I got her pregnant, so obviously I have a very large ego. And uh, now she's just the funniest thing, she's a natural comedian. The honest guy, this is what happened last week. I'm talking to her and I said, listen honey, you gotta start rubbing your hands all over the mirrors and the doors and the bedrooms, the sliding doors, because you're leaving hand She said, well, don't worry, I'll clean them up. I go, really? She goes, yeah. She walks in the bathroom, sticks her head around the corner and says, okay, watch and learn. Okay, that was real funny to me when it happened. I, just to write it to you. I thought that was going to be funny to you. But see, that's what comedy is. Comedy is a work. You're always trying stuff out. There's nothing that happened to her. Uh, I came walking out of the bathroom and almost knocked her over. She goes, Dad, you scared the crap out of me. I go, honey, you can't say that. I can't say crap. No, don't say it anymore. Crap's a bad word. Please stop saying it. Why not? Because crap is bad. Crap's bad. Stop saying it. But I can't say it. No, don't say crap anymore. No more crap. Please stop. But no. But no. Besides, where did you learn a word like that? She points to her sister. From the bitch in the corner. <laughs> you gotta watch. You gotta watch. But things are getting so weird now. People are dying left or right. Finally, that dying period is over. You believe how many people died in like two weeks? That was unbelievable. First, the first one that went was David Carradine. You, I guess you heard that story. I figured out what really happened. The night before, he picked up a woman in a hotel in Bangkok. Took her back to his hotel room. He drops his pants. She looks down and she goes, you call that home? <laughs> and he said, come back tomorrow. <laughs> so they're in the hotel room, the police are there, and there's a lady, little little police officer, a woman standing, she's right in front of him, and he's just hanging over, and one of the male cops said to her, look, he's nuts over you, <laughs> and he was fired the next day. That's the kind of stuff I love, not particularly you, but I like that. <laughs> and then, of course, we lost Farrah Foss and Michael Jackson, both on the same day, that was bizarre. Farrah Fawcett died of rectal cancer, Michael Jackson died of all. How many people think it should have been the other way around? Oh, oh, oh and don't, no, people, I, I hate this, people always say, you shouldn't pick on Michael Jackson. He was a, so, yes, he was a superstar, he was a human being. And you think that our jokes are going to stop him from selling records? No, he sold more records since he's dead than he was alive. And you know, I didn't even think the guy could die, he's got so much plastic in his body, how do you kill somebody like that? Then they had a big, big ceremony down at Staples. I live in downtown. I hated it. It stopped all the traffic. I hated the fact they did it cost the city a million bucks, and they're going to bury him. You know, why bury him? You take a match, light his foot, he goes up like that. Boy, when you guys get quiet, you don't fuck around. You know, your work is a group, and I think that's really important. 
So we've got a great show. Before I get out of here and start bringing up the first comic, I thought we'd do a little bit more music. You guys like the rock and roll? Yeah. Listen, if I'm keeping you up, please let me know. Because uh, there seems to be a little bit of a problem. I don't know if you guys are aware, this is a live show, and we can't see you because of the spotlight. So it's important to laugh out loud. That tells us how we're doing. Because a lot of you are not laughing, but it's funny you're sitting there going, So let it out because laughter is air, moving air, and if you don't let it out, you're going to build up all this air pressure inside your body, and later on you're going to be driving home in the car with a bunch of people. And this air that you've been saving up is going to ferment, and it's going to slip out into slowly making everybody suspicious of you, or it's going to come out really fast, pissing everybody off. So let it out. So I told you to do a little rock and roll. I did bring my axe, and we're going to take it. This is my guitar. Now you're looking and you're saying, wow, a guitar with a flying skull in it. When you guys think of a guitar with a flying skull in it, don't I pop right into your head? <laughs> Is this as far from reality as it could possibly get? So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little blues. You guys are going to get to be involved in it later on, so here we go. Musician, I just have a guitar. I don't expect much. Tip them heavily, because drugs are very expensive in Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> 